let's start welcome tamir uh, welcome everyone uh, this is kamar ahmed simon from bangladesh presenting uh, a q and a session for the linali spotlight world cinema fund film series i hope people who have uh, connect uh, connected can hear us clear and loud uh, tamir can you say uh, hello again please hello i'm i'm so uh, happy to be in this panel and thank you for inviting me i can see um um i'm i'm very happy to join come out in this discussion i'm so grateful for the people who joined the panel i hope uh, we get some inspiring time together thank you tamir i haven't done this before uh, but uh, uh, this idea of connecting people like you and uh, uh, film like minded filmmakers from different parts of the world really intrigued me so i said yes to this so um, but before we go on uh, we must acknowledge as you were saying we must acknowledge the people behind uh, like vincent jo bungo from uh, bugno from uh, wcf and sara film from bangladesh for creating this program together and we must also thank goth institute for organizing this um, such an interesting event in such a fashion connecting especially bangladesh india pakistan sri lanka all these countries and uh, honestly speaking it's a very interesting film to start with this series uh, which connects uh, cities like uh, cairo with beirut uh, baghdad and berlin as well so for people who might have uh, might be interested to know more about me or the guest of the day uh, and the film we are discussing here please follow the comment uh, i guess there are some links the, the organizers supposed to provide about the film about the program and about us and uh, and let's uh, carry forward the discussion okay but uh, before we start uh, the film has been available from 5 pm from today until tomorrow 5 am 24 hours and uh, for those who haven't seen the film uh, please uh, go and watch uh, watch it until the link is available but i prefer not to say anything about the film if that is okay with you tamir not because the film is banned in egypt and uh, you are in a legal battle at the moment to release the film but because i believe it is the audience's right to discover a film as freshly as the maker has delivered hope you agree sure sure okay okay so moving forward uh, tamir um, i was reading your interviews i was reading your materials i was following some materials and i read somewhere um, i'm quoting a line like tamir al said director of in the last days of the city is a filmmaker living between berlin and cairo where he was born in 1972 and in another note uh, from an another interview he gave uh, in filmcommon.com probably it says like in the last days of the city is a love letter to those who don't yet have their lives figured out so my i, I wanted to start this discussion from here like how do you relate to that have you figured it out yourself like can you please elaborate a little more about the context Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Started to make the I, film yeah, yeah, between I, Cairo and Berlin. Yeah, but can you just like uh, repeat the comment of like the quote of film comment because uh, the 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 sound was breaking, so I couldn't get it. It it said in the last days of the city is a love letter to those who don't yet have their lives figured out. Yeah. I mean, and I, it, I, this related to the film for me in yeah, some other layer, yeah, and yeah, I was yeah, yeah, of course, of course. You know, I, I mean, first of all, I I believe that you know, the, um, every film has so many readings and different readings, and um, I I always say like the um, what the filmmaker is saying about his film is not um, is not really. the um, like we cannot just rely on what the filmmaker is 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 saying because you know i i believe that um the real film is not the film i make <laughs> the real film is the film that people watch and they are different because what the film i make i think always it's always with every filmmaker when you make a film big part of it stays in your head you don't put it on a screen and yeah, when correct. you watch the film you 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 think that you have um you you link things to 
to what's inside your head and you 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 kind of complete the pictures and the picture and and, and link the dots together but actually the one who can really the audience are the only one who can say what the film is about you know so i i believe yeah. like that what people say about my film is is maybe more uh, true uh, yeah. than what i say so i just can can share my opinion but you know in mm -hmm. the end the people figure figure out or 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 find like read the film in in, in a way or another i mm -hmm. i i always agree because you know this is the film that they watch this mm -hmm. is one mm -hmm. two and this is also very important in this context you know one time i was doing an interview and then i remember that that question very well when the when the um, when the when the when the journalist asked me like he said do you think that your film could unify the people like can people get like like they can agree on the film mm -hmm. and i said you know i don't wish people are unified uh, mm -hmm. in, in in relation to my film i'm actually mm -hmm. i i believe that i'm looking for more um a kind of um uh, a mutual relationship with the audience like eye to eye level like in the same balance mm -hmm. so in a way i feel i i i project the film to the audience but every one of the audience is projecting his life in the film and of course, then of course and then we 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 get a, a unique uh film for every one of the audience so everyone will see the film differently uh, but regarding the the, the 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 quote that you just mentioned, I mean, of course, I can see totally, and I I why this can be uh, like um, a way of reading the film. Mm -hmm. When I made the film, I was totally living in Cairo. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, that was my life there. I wasn't, I wasn't. Um, I made the film like over ten years. And um, I was living in Cairo almost all my life until I finished the film. I started to 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 shift and live between Berlin and, and Cairo after I finished the film. Okay. So okay. yes, in a way, I I I see. Uh, sometimes I I look at I look at the film now while my life has completely changed. Mm -hmm. And I look from this position, and I see it completely different. So, mm -hmm. of course, yes, I I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. And that's a very interesting way to put it. Like um, in the first part, where you were saying that every audience have their own film, they project their their own film to the screen, and that reminded me of like um, the, with the poetry. And your film reminds of poetry so much in terms of visual, not in terms of only visual poetry, but also in terms of the uh, the the way you approach the narrative and uh, the way you played with the lines of the narrative, the way we we do things when we are writing. Uh, but as, as I believe, you were born in 1972 uh, uh, and you started the shooting at the age of 37 uh, in the beginning of 2009, if I'm not wrong, um, with probably less than 15% of the uh, budget, as you said somewhere, and you started without a script, but you had a structure in your mind. And you, you, as I read that you prepared for two years uh, and planned for uh, like uh, three months of shooting, but ended up with 250 hours of rush uh, for in two, two years. So reading that, uh, this sounded so familiar. This is something uh, I identically experienced with my film in Are You Listening? Like, I mean, I exactly started in 2009 without a script, uh, but an idea a structure. And I also planned for three months and ended up in two years, uh, not 250, but 200 hours of rush. But I, I mean, what do you think? Like uh, why, as you say, this film last 10 years shaped you, who you are. Uh, and until the film was finished, you were in Cairo and now you have a different, completely different look at the film. So wh what do you think? Why do the kind of experience we are going through around the world, like you, me, uh, when most of the audience uh, are living under the gigantic um, shadows of Hollywood blockbusters uh, or nowadays Netflix. Um, why do you think, why are we making films uh, or, or like uh, spending a decade of our lives uh, uh, on a film and transforming ourselves? 
what what is your take yeah and why? I, I, yeah i i i think it's a very important question like you know i i as i said i was working on this film for for a decade and i was um, every the when I, for this decade, every every day when I woke up, the first thing that comes to my mind that I should quit. Why do I do this to myself? You know, I and and then you know it's um, for me. I I believe cinema is a way of engaging with life. It's a way to to learn and to grow and to to understand things and to understand the reality around me and to understand myself also. So um, for me, making a film is um, is not only um, you know I'm, I'm I also I don't feel that I I I don't put myself in a position of 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 feeling that I have something that I want to give it to the others. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking more for a more mutual relationship, as, as, as I said, like, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not interested in, in educating people things about their lives, because mm -hmm. who I am to, mm -hmm. to tell people mm -hmm. about life. Mm -hmm. I can only share my questions. Of for me, the film is, is a research, is an ongoing research, mm -hmm. is an ongoing research about the reality around me. It's, um, mm -hmm. It's as I said. It's a, it's a way to engage with life. It's a way to raise my questions. It's a way to to. I have a curiosity. I have a passion. I have things that provokes me, and I want and 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 by making a film, mm -hmm. I I I I understand. I understand these things, and I understand myself, and I move to other questions. You know, you, you never get an answer. You move to other questions. It's a it's a journey that. And through this journey, you grow and you 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 um, you become closer to the person that you want to be. And um, and I always say these things to you know sometimes like when when I teach or something I say this to my students like you know you always you always remember that you do the film for yourself. You don't do it to anyone. You, you you don't owe it to the world. And the world can continue without my film and without your film and without anything. You know, there is no film that is going to change the world. Exactly. But the film can, can change us. And the last thing, maybe I can end. You know, making a film is, is, is an agony. It's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a picnic. Hmm. It's, a, it's a journey. It's a very tough journey, full of loneliness, full of questions, full of doubts. Hmm. And it's really an agony. Hmm. And I, I always say, like, like, you know, this is regardless, even if you have money, if you have big, uh, big Ooh, company, it, yeah. you, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's always the same. Yeah. So I always say like, never make a film unless the agony of not making it is bigger than the agony of making it. Exactly. Because well otherwise, said. why, why would you do it? Very well said, very well said. And um, this agony actually reminds me some of the moments I really enjoyed when I was watching the film and uh, it mesmerized me that you, you can read the agony without reading the agony, like uh, it is there. And, uh, and also with the music, you, you, you did certain things with the music and I really loved the music. Uh, it really blew me out. But at the same time, in parallel, I was just thinking, this question kept on my mind, like, um, is this the music, uh, especially when I, uh, I followed the cello, you used the cello, which is a very fantastic, very uh, powerful instrument, and, but with a very strong context and uh, history. So I, I, I was just wondering, uh, uh, like uh, I kept thinking, is this music very part of Cairo or is this inside Khaled's head? My, what mm. I meant, like, did you have this in your head when you were shooting the film or you were in the post, you decided that, uh, like, like, like Khaled does not feel from Cairo, uh, uh, or he always wants to leave, uh, I mean, go away, but uh, don't know why and where. And uh, mm -hmm. this music, uh, some, some way, I, I just wondered, is this a part of the cityscape, or is this the part of the mindscape of the yeah. maker or the character? How do you, like, 
I, I have another aspect of the question. Like I, I was just uh, thinking, is this, don't read me wrong. When we are making film, we always uh, try to uh, put our ideas on, onto it. Uh, like uh, we, sometimes we follow the film, sometimes film follows us. So, uh, so my, my question is like, was there in any way uh, in your mind when thinking about the music, uh, there was this issue like you thought of uh, this music can take the film to a wider audience, so-called uh, Western, quote unquote, uh, Europe, quote unquote. Did did this like uh, like yeah. a, as I read you, you probably grew up uh, with the European film schooling, uh, maybe uh, the way the montage came on, and um, I really wanted to hear more in, in depth about you, your city schooling in respect uh, of this music and how you came. Uh, that music is so beautiful, uh, but at the same time, I'm not sure it is from Cairo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> like uh, speaking about the music, I can say many things, and you know, I I hope I can like um, yeah. I mean, first of all, <clears throat> I don't like music in films. Okay. Like for me, I I I remember when I was when I was a child and my in my first experience with cinema. I used to ask my father, like, you know, because everything in film seems so real. But then, you like know, I, I used to accept the music. And, you know, except because in, the, in reality, we don't, we don't have this music. And sometimes I'm asking my father, who is playing this music? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, of course, I, I feel like the film, I, I prefer, like, like, this doesn't mean that, that um, I... I'm, I'm against using music. I'm against that we use the music to kind of manipulate the emotions of the audience or... or... So I, I was not sure that if the film needs music or not for a very long time. And I was thinking that... But organic, I, I wanted to... to uh, when, I, when I made this decision of, of trying to have music on the film. So first of all, I want to say that the film was like, as you said, I had a kind of a, of a scenes breakdown or a structure that we were working on and we were developing while making the film. So the, the film was based on, on improvisation. Like improvisation is a key word in the process. So many things were improvised. And I, I think this is part also of trying to capture the soul of a city. And that was like, that was the thing that provoked me in the beginning. Like I wanted to, I wanted, I was just like, that was my biggest question. Is it possible at all to capture a soul of a city inside a film of, of that is only two hours? You know, the city is, is very huge and the film is so limited. Like how can you reflect all the layers of this big structure of a city inside two hours without simplifying things and make it looks like black and white. Mm -hmm. uh, um, how can you create this complexity? How can you create this depth? Can, how can you, is there a, a cinematic way to express this? These are the questions that were like chasing me for a decade of time. And, mm -hmm. but because improvisation was part of the film and I was trying mm -hmm. on, on the post because I wanted to have music that comes from inside the film and not and not add it to the film. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and one thing is, I don't believe like, you know, I feel the identity doesn't come from the type of the music. So yes, the music is not Egyptian, but it doesn't belong to any uh, country. It doesn't yeah, have a nationality. Course, course, it's, course, it's, course. It belongs to the medium. It's music. Yeah, it's it belongs a, it's to the wider, medium. wider, more, yeah. more, more makes it wider. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I feel also, so that, that there is something in the film that I wanted, and there is something about Cairo and about the way I see Cairo, that I wanted the film to, to also to speak, to, to, to feel that Cairo is not an island. It's part of the world also, and it's connected mm -hmm. to, to everything happening around us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yes, I had like some ideas in my head that, that I think some parts of the music that I feel I kind of, I was hearing in my ear during me, the making of the film, but of course, mm -hmm. and, and this is very important. So I, I tried many times with different friends and with different composers that, that were really doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But you know, every time 
they were kind of working to compose score for the film. And then I take it and I add it to the, the image. I feel the image is rejecting the score. Mm -hmm. It's not because something wrong with the image, with the, with the score. The, the, mm -hmm. uh, they were very beautiful scores and beautiful mm -hmm. music. Mm -hmm. But I felt that there is something that is not creating this organic feeling that the music comes from the film and mm -hmm. it's not added to it. And especially that, you know, there was one part when, when the, the friend of Khaled sending him this message about like trying to, to hear the, the silence mm -hmm. in the noise of Cairo. And mm -hmm. I wanted the music to do this, mm -hmm. to, to be as, as, as a note of silence inside this um, uh, uh, noise and hectic, it's kind of that. that. escape. Yeah. This and then actually what happened is when I met Amelie and Victor, these two musicians who, who did the music in the end, mm -hmm. first of all, I was so intrigued by, the, um, by how they worked together. They were like, they were like working together for a long time and uh, Emily is, is is one of the um, best musicians I've ever met in my life and same mm -hmm. Victor. Mm -hmm. So Amelie is playing uh, cello and Victor, is, Victor was doing um, electronics. Mm -hmm. And this combination seemed so inspiring for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I offered them that we do a kind of an impro improvisation sessions, like we play the film and they play music with the film. Oh, and okay. we did this over 12 weeks. So mm -hmm. we were like playing the film and they were playing with the film and then we stop and we discuss and then they play again and again and again and again. So actually the music, I felt that the music has to be improvised the same way the whole film was made. Okay, okay, fantastic. That's really very inspiring. 12 weeks, you, you did that 12 weeks? Yes, I did this for 12 weeks until we come up, we come up with a proposal Mm -hmm. that we were, the three of us were happy with. Mm -hmm. and, and I like this a lot. I think like, you know, I, I feel when you work with people, they add a lot to what you, what you have. Exactly. And then this process of negotiating the work mm -hmm. makes it even uh, stronger and stronger. It was very challenging and it, as, as, as every process, it has moments that wasn't easy. But in the end, I think the three of us were so happy with the with the final result with the with the mm. with, with what what came out mm. no that's very inspiring to know that uh, this improvisation that kept uh, the mood in uh, not from the inception of the film but also from the like almost a day in chapter when you were doing the music you kept on improvising and uh, on that note uh, I, I wanted to ask something regarding the approach that uh, i as a filmmaker i read and definitely the audience some of the audience might also read, there are materials that you improvise with fictional and non-fictional materials, like you switch between uh, treatments. And uh, I read somewhere, you, you told a very, very beautiful story. I will quote you. Uh, this is Tamir al sides I'm quoting. So when you are making a fiction film, you are like a farmer. You water your seeds and take care of your plants while they are growing every day. Your work depends on patience and giving the time. But when you make a documentary, you are like a fisherman. You go to the sea, you throw your net, hoping that sea will be generous and give you some fishes. Part of your job is to believe that the sea is generous. That's, a, that's a, one of the like, best lines I have read uh, in any film related interviews. And I, 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 kudos to you. And, but I had, I had this triggered in my head, like this whole uh, improvisation uh, that actually counters the typical practice of differentiating the genres between fiction and nonfiction, and especially uh, with the ever, um, ever evolving audiovisual experience in the last two decades that we experienced uh, with the bombardments of contents and YouTube culture and web series. Uh, I, I, had, I had this, I, this is not you, like I had this question in general in my head and especially watching after your cinema, uh, this came to my uh, head, like, how do you think this genre uh, are going to shape uh, uh, the art, like fiction, nonfiction, improvisations, and these bombardments? The, the art I'm here referring here, uh, the art that we grew up knowing as, quote-unquote, cinema. So, 
Yeah. How do you think this whole uh, practice that we are doing with uh, experimenting between uh, reality and uh, fiction yeah. and, and how this parallel bombardment going on in uh, changing the audiovisual experience and the entertainment culture worldwide? So, form the art that we call art, uh, cinema. Uh, form that we call cinema is going to shape in next two decades. What is your take on it? Or maybe one yeah. decade? You know, I, I feel like it's very exciting time. It's, um, I feel we are living in, um, in a very inspiring era in regards to the, the language of the cinema itself. We are witnessing a moment when the whole aesthetics and the whole language is changing due to mm -hmm. many things. Like, let me mm -hmm. tell you, like share with you, like something that is for me, that is very inspiring. You know, when I was a child, for me, making a film mm -hmm. was like what's happening behind the camera was mm -hmm. completely kind of a secret thing. I don't know what was it. So mm -hmm. I remember like the first time I saw uh, a, a making of a program on TV, I was like, what is this? You know, I, when I was a child, the, the, I wasn't, I, uh, the, the maximum you can do if you love cinema is you have a, a, a photograph camera and you take some pictures. Mm -hmm. But you, you know, you, and this is very different of today. Today, every audience is a filmmaker. He is, mm -hmm. he, 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 has, he has a tool that allow him to capture the reality around him and, and, and make shots. And even like the, the, many people are connecting this together and they share it in a few minutes mm -hmm. on different social media platforms and then they exactly. receive, they receive a, a, a feedback. So they have the whole experience of, of filmmaking. And I see it's very different if you speak to audience mm -hmm. who the, this, this visual language is mm -hmm. something that is so secret for them and when you speak to audience who are practicing this language every day, this creates a different dynamic with the audience. And, it's, and, and, and for me, I see that YouTube, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, mm -hmm. and, 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 and every um, uh, social media uh, platform is part of shaping the language of, 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 of the cinema at the moment. And mm -hmm. of course, because people are experiencing this with their mobile, like keeping, mm -hmm. like, like capturing the reality. So they also experience the position of the filmmaker, you know? So all these questions about what's, what's moral and what's not moral, what's ethical and what's not ethical, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 are raised now because mm -hmm. now everybody understand it. And because exactly. you, you, you see this power dynamics that are related uh, the uh, your position behind mm -hmm. the camera and that and, and when you create a narrative that mm -hmm. you are able to create a narrative so i feel this is going to kind this is we are living a moment when the whole language is kind of changing and comes upside down because mm -hmm. of this awareness that that mm -hmm. the audience are having and the way they are discussing things are, are, are very different and I, and I like this a lot and i think this is what creates this uh, uh, um, what makes fiction and non-fiction and, and mixing these genres and the hybrid films mm -hmm. are very interesting because it's also with, you know, with like, there is a question with this social, mm -hmm. with, the, with, with the way we communicate now, with the spread of social media, with all these things. So there is a, there is a real question. What mm -hmm. is fiction and what's real? You know, in general, in every what film real? in the world, what is real? in every film in the world, like you know, wh what is when is when is the moment that you can call it real, and when is the moment that you call it fiction? Mm -hmm. So you know, it's a uh, it's a very uh, it's not it's so not. We don't know exactly how it is going to shape in next one decade, and uh, it, yeah. but definitely it's a very interesting interesting time as you already mentioned. But I can't help myself looking uh, back to you. Uh, is this the same flat uh, as we are talking yesterday? Is this the, is this the flat where the film was no. shot? No, this is uh, uh, this is actually the um, this is where I I shot the film. So this, and I, I wish that we were a little bit yeah, earlier. Yeah, please. This is the window. This is the. Oh. I wanted to see the window that you. Shot yeah, that, that was the window, but it no. was like you know. Uh, the, the window okay. is a bit different now, but this is the view. Unfortunately, it's okay. night. 
but uh, but if we but that was the where I where you shot where the, the woman getting bitten uh, by her husband. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. And you also wrote the script in this script uh, in this uh, uh, apartment. Uh, this is the place you had before, or you uh, you made this uh, after the film uh, for the film. Sorry, say 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 this again. Uh, is this the flat where you were living before uh, uh, starting the film, or this is the flat you started for for the film? Like uh, no, where you I, no. When I I was I I moved. You know, it's it's an interesting story. I um when I started, uh, uh, I was living in a different flat, and actually mm -hmm. I wanted like this issue of Khaled looking for a flat in downtown mm -hmm. like was not uh, a real thing it was fictionalized i wanted mm -hmm. to put him under a time pressure as part of the challenges that the character is having inside mm -hmm. the film mm -hmm. so that was a, a fictionalized thing but actually while we are working for while we are um, how can, while we are preparing for the shoot mm -hmm. i was kicked out of my flat so I was also looking for a flat and, and you know, this kind of living, uh, like don't know where the film ends and where my life starts was, was really like, it's, it's, it's an experience that, 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 that I had for, for the whole decade, you know, I was so confused sometimes. And, and now I, yeah, in, in many situations I was, I was going through this. So we were looking for a flat and then I found this one and I was uh, uh, from one side it was it was the right one for the shoot and also I I stayed here for uh, for for 10 years. Uh, now you put me a, a, another question like uh, who do you love more the confused uh, Tamer uh, uh, Tam, confused Khaled or the accomplished Tamer? <laughs> this is a very <laughs> This is a very uh, um you know it's um I'm so grateful to uh, to this confusion. I think I was, you know, I was for for a very long time. You, you meant confusion. You are so yes. grateful to this confusion, exactly. Yes, I was so grateful yeah. to the uh, to to the confusion. I was so grateful to the doubts because I feel, you know, there is something that if you ask me, what is you know, I when I see the film, I I kind of there are so in every frame there are things that I wish to change. <laughs> the only thing that I'm happy with, if there is one thing that I'm proud of, is I feel I I believe the doubts inside the film, and this makes me so. Um, you know, it's it's very it's very uh, how can I say it's very um, it's very strange. So in a way, this doubt was like kind of my agony, but all of a sudden it became like my inspiration. I totally read you, Tamir. This confusion and doubts uh, made makes who we are. And those two yeah. are very fundamental core of uh, being alive as a filmmaker in, in this very strange time that we are living. But I was reading uh, about a very interesting collaboration uh, somewhere. You, you, you had a collaboration on the script with Rasha, uh, Rasha Salti. Yes. Uh, for those who don't know Rasha, I want to add a little. Uh, Rasha uh, is a researcher, writer, curator and art uh, of art and cinema. She was born in Toronto, lives and works between Beirut and Berlin. Her curatorial projects were exhibited in numerous international public uh, institutions, including Barcelona, Berlin, Beirut, Chile. Uh, she's also a commission, commissioning editor for the prestigious La Lucan uh, at Arte France. Uh, I'm proud to say, like, uh, she commissioned my second part of uh, Water Trilogy, Day After, uh, after Are You Listening, for La Lucan. So coming back to the query, I, I was wondering, how did you manage uh, the challenge of working together with another person for, from another mindscape in a creative process like writing for cinema? This is something I personally very struggled not not only uh, in terms of when I'm writing, but when I'm collaborating in any form with camera or even co-producers, co even with uh, uh, editors or sound designers, I really find uh, not with the editors. Uh, I have this fantastic sync with the editors, uh, my, my, the editor I work with, 
it's kind of like my soulmate but uh, all like in m m most most of the collaborators are soulmates without being your soulmate they don't come to collaborate with you that that is with all due respect to everyone but i have this question how do you how do you like collaborate uh, with the different mindscape uh, when especially you are writing how how did that happen and how did you collaborate on that i mean i i, I have to say like i was it was one of the um, i think like when you make a film, you know, this is what I believe. I believe you need, you need to have people you trust around you. And when you trust someone, then you really need to, uh, you really need to, uh, to go into this kind of eye-to-eye um, uh, -eye collaboration um, uh, uh, relationship. And, 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 and I have to say, like, I, Really, like the experience with Russia was was with, was one of the best experience I had in my life to collaborate with someone who who understand the um, the, the the what I'm trying to to um, to achieve or what I'm trying to uh, to do, and also the, the the fragility of the film and. And, and, you know, there was, of course, there was like so many uh, aspects of the film itself that wasn't easy to, to, to handle. But at the same time, she, she is able to provoke uh, uh, new uh, uh, areas and new, um, in, in, in the narrative structure and, and unfold the layers of the film in a different way. So it was, it was, it was, it was very, um, uh, how can I say, it was um, like, first of all, without Russia, we would, I wouldn't have this, we worked together for more than a year. And, mm -hmm. and, and it was difficult because we don't live in the same city. So we, we always needed mm -hmm. to, to find a way either her to mm -hmm. come to Cairo or I go to Beirut and to, mm -hmm. to, to, uh, to create like some, some time for sessions together. Mm -hmm. And she was so generous mm -hmm. uh, in the way she communicated, she, 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 she worked with me. I feel like she, we, um, I'm very happy with this collaboration. It was, mm -hmm. it was so great. And she, um, it was a, it was a continuous conversation and dialogue mm -hmm. about what I want and about what she wants. Mm -hmm. And together we, we, we reach something that we both are happy with. And, mm -hmm. and that, that was, I think this is, for me, this is one of the basic rules of filmmaking. Yeah, that that so if I'm not able to convince my crew who are there to help me, then I'm not able to convince anyone. Yeah, exactly. So if there is something that needs to be discussed, then we need to discuss it again and again and again. And every time uh, uh, this takes us to a different place that makes everything better and better and better and better. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, so, so this thing of, of, of having someone also like, I think it was important for me to work with someone who has a gaze of, of a woman mm -hmm. in, in this film. <laughs> I think that, that, that helped a lot to, uh, to reach what I want and to create a dialogue that, that helped the film because also she, she has the clarity in her mind and, and she, has, she, 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 had, she was standing on, on, on the exact right um, position towards the film. So she is inside the film enough, but also she is able to look at it from, from outside. outside. From outside, yeah. And yeah. This, this balance you know, is very critical, yeah, because of course, of once course. you are writing your own film, you are too much in too deep. Yes. Sometimes exactly. you actually block your vision exactly. and you can't see many things. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, it's, it's also an opportunity to say that I think um, I think I call myself the, the, the most, the luckiest filmmaker in the world because every person worked on this film gave me generously something from his heart. Everyone, everyone. I was so yeah, lucky yeah, yeah. In, 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 in every 
one uh, that I worked and collaborated with in the film, behind the camera or in front of the camera. All the actors. You, you uh, cannot uh, actually Abdullah, work with Khaled Abdullah as as an actor and as a co-producer, as a as a, as my fellow producer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Basim mm -hmm. Fayyad as an actor and as a DOP, uh, Haider Hilu, Basim Hajjar, every, everyone, Layla, everyone, everyone in the film, mm -hmm. behind the camera and in front of the mm -hmm. camera, I was so, so lucky. And I learned a lot from each one of them. So they, they made me a better filmmaker. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I, yeah, it's an, just an opportunity. That's a very beautiful way to put it. Mm -hmm. You cannot make a film without a piece of heart of every every person who are involved in it. Yeah, and 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 and, and I, I believe that everyone like they were considering the film their film. They are not working on it. It's their film, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that's why. Like when in every discussion, in every argument, in every there was this feeling that we want to make something that we that we, we, we both are happy with, like with everyone and, and everybody is happy with, and that was like part of the process, of course. Mm -hmm. oh, that's a very beautiful way to put it. You made me very emotional about my friends also. Like this is really, you have to have the piece of everyone's heart in it. Like um, that's very, we as filmmakers sometimes or most of the times need to acknowledge the collaboration but that is a very critical part but i would uh, i don't know how much time do we have left uh, probably it's uh, 10 12 minutes we have i i, I can't help myself uh, um, one last question you say this woman gaze and uh, about russia's uh, collaboration and this gaze word remain with me and I, i'm just thinking that you you uh, say it somewhere um, hold on just um, uh, you say it somewhere. Uh, the, the city is very complicated, multi-layered, and has a sophisticated structure. So when we try to squeeze it in two hours, we simplify things in a way that makes the structure lose its depth. I mean, we, I mean, you, me, and us, our generation who were born in the aftermath of Edward Said and his monolithic Orientalism in the 70s, and grew up um, in the post-Berlin uh, era that started with the first uh, Gulf War, uh, which invaded in invasion of Iran, uh, Iraq. Um, I mean, watching your film, looking at the beautiful layers that you laid, I wonder how did you manage the uh, international collaborations like the sponsors and the funders who usually, I'm not, I'm not saying that these specific persons or the organizations are, but in generally, uh, who usually look at us, quote unquote, and our cinema as them from their perspective. Like you were saying the other day, uh, this is the first time you'll be having a discuss discussion between um, the same side of the world. So what is your take about this gaze of this uh, gaze at us, at our cinema, uh, uh, of them uh, from their perspective and how that rule our choice of cinema like how like uh, the kind of cinema that we choose when we propose the funders when we propose the sponsors uh, do you think is there any influence into into this gaze that happens from their side to our side yeah i mean first of all i believe that i believe that if someone is investing in something then he has to be part of of it this is what i believe like i don't see this as a as a problem the thing is we need to be very we need to 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 um, to find the right partners you know mm -hmm. it's the right partners who understand the essence of what we are doing and if we i think like you know there are like um uh, for me big um one of the of the of the major and main tasks of any filmmaker today is to protect his or her film of being hijacked by the by the agenda of 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 the of, of the funders of the market of the of the industry of, of 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 whatever i mean i believe that every film has people who who will like it as it is 
mm-hmm. and who would support it as it is without you um, push it in any different uh, direction. Mm-hmm. So, but then your job is to find these people who, who, who are inspired and excited about your work. I want to work with someone who uh, understand what I'm doing and who is excited about it. I'm also the same way. I'm looking for an eye to eye relationship. I'm looking for this. I don't want someone to educate me how to tell my story, the story of my city, because I know the story of my city much better. In this sense, part of why the film took all this time, because I was looking for these real partners. You know, I, I would say that, that we, the, 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 the funding that we accepted in total Mm. was even less the funded that we rejected because mm. because i knew that accepting this fund might affect the film itself don't forget that i made the film i was i was doing the post production of the film like i finished shooting like before 2011 and after 2011 people wants only films about the revolution and 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 for me i wouldn't i didn't want to add the revolution in the end and this discussion i had with so many people who wanted to support the film and 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 for this i refused to to get money because i feel this is going to change the film completely and for me it's much stronger when it's not there exactly, exactly. and it's a, it's an artistic and aesthetical choice that i will defend exactly. all the time and 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 and, and and, and for this, I had to pay the price of waiting to, to find the, the right people who want to support the film as it is. And I, was, I would say in the end, it, it, it went well, but we, we, we said no so many times and I don't regret it. I would, you know, every time, and, and I was also, I want to say that I was very lucky that I was supported by all my team. Like no one, you know, it was sometimes very difficult. We were in a moment when we needed any money because people were working for many years without getting, the, uh, without getting paid sometimes or, you know, but they, but, but they also, they understand that, you know, we, you invested in something and then you, you want to protect it also. You don't want to, to, uh, to ruin it or to, 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 to change it. So yes, I, I, from one side, I see what you mean and, and, and of course it exists, but from the other side that it's, it's very important, you know, um, I like a lot your, your, your question about um, the confused Khalid that I'm, I'm so grateful for. I think one of the things that I'm, I'm also very grateful to uh, and I'm also very grateful to my team that not only me, I think we were all very sharp about this thing, mm-hmm. how we want to present our film, which mm-hmm. film we want to make. You know, it's That's not, like, we're not like trying to um, see how we satisfy people. We said, yeah, this is what yeah, we exactly. want to do. Exactly. This is what we want to do. And if you don't like it, it's fine. You know, we, we, we believe that we will find someone else who will like it. It's very okay not to be loved by everyone. Yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. important that you love your own work. Yeah, exactly. You know, because, you know, in the end of the day, you don't want to, you don't want this to, to, you can't live with it. You can't you live can't, with it. You can't you know, end with like something you, that you're you, 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 It's kind of you... You, you, you hurt your son or you damage your son in a way, then you, you, you won't forgive yourself. That's a very inspirational note to close with. I would love to... Uh, I just want to say one thing, yeah. because I see that, uh, like I see that um, there are two questions from the audience. And I want to mention that one of the questions came from Sarah Vila, who is a friend, and I'm so happy that she is... Uh, Joining. Why do, why do you uh, see the qu- question? It's it's down in the icons. There is Q and A. Oh yes. Okay. So oh. there is one question oh, from. There Sarah. are two questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, from Sarah. I'm happy that uh, she is here. I didn't see her since long time, since maybe twenty. So Sarah, uh, who asked, uh, which are the major aspects that you learned from making Akhir uh, Ayman Madina? 
uh, which is uh, in the last days of the city uh, that you are bringing into your future projects yeah it's um, you know sara it's it's uh, basically this the what i wish is to to stay uh, small in front of my work is to stay <laughs> is to stay um, how can i say is to stay doubtful you know when you uh, your question is 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 a key into this thing because i i'm grateful to the doubts that were chasing me for so many years and you know when you and 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 you have this feeling because in your first film i can tell you that i every day i was shooting i i i was thinking that this won't work and this doubt of of this doubt of that maybe this is not the right thing to do was 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 great but you know when you do it for the second time you you kind of you, you have a comfort zone already and my wish is to find the dare and the support and the the, the courage inside me to leave my comfort zone and move to to new doubts and new questions and not to be uh, and not to 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 um, to lose this fire now that's the that's the base take of this discourse that i had with you tamir uh, the doubts and confusions that i am so always engrossed with but uh, it it kind of energized me in a different way this discourse that uh, doubts are very much part of us that who we are and doubt some things keeps us pushing forward i would go to the next uh, question uh, what will be your advice to uh, advice for young future independent filmmakers uh, your advice to avoid yeah, negative yeah i can and, say you know yeah, uh, yeah I, I i said many things today like you know yeah, we already don't discussed make, many let's don't make a film unless the agony of not making the film is bigger than the agony of making it know that yeah. it's 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 a very it's a very tough job and mm. and and you you will not be happy doing it and there are many 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 much easier jobs that are well paid and maybe you if it if your passion is not there don't don't do it you know and um, when you when you hold the camera this is very important when you hold the camera use the camera to ask questions don't use the camera mm -hmm. to give answers mm -hmm. this is like really uh, 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 something that i keep remind myself remember that you don't you don't know more than your audience it happened that you are making a film but you don't know the world better than them so share with them your questions more and don't tell them uh 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 don't try to answer their questions um the film is um is a human being that you that that you need to 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 communicate with for a long time to understand it so allow yourself to get lost allow yourself uh, 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 of time that you are not so sure of what you think don't think that cinema is only about that you you don't try to to fill the, the 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 image of a filmmaker that we get from cinema it's not true <laughs> and and keep this fragility that makes you real and 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 human listen to your team these people are there to help you and if you don't if you don't if you are not able to convince them then you won't be able to convince anyone i don't know this is like some <laughs> and that's a very well well said thank you tamir thank you, uh, thank you. for this fantastic note uh, and the beautiful film that you already made and before i say goodbye uh, i must thank uh, dhaka gothe institute uh, especially the director dr kirsten hagen uh, bro uh, and a team uh, i must thank uh, the other gi uh, gi's gothe institute from india pakistan sri lanka and especially vincenzo bugno uh, uh, from wcf and sara uh, for curating such a wonderful bundle of films thank you everyone yeah thank you thank you bye 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 bye